something to just few people. So I'll give a piece of paper to some random people to pick. So that I can make it clear if I can use It's not everybody that uh, got access to it. So, I believe after the message, we will believe we will know the reason why we have it without even knowing that we what is on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, bring us to the topic of the heavenly vision. I believe the reason why we normally move backwards to take the things we left or rejected is because we don't have a heavenly vision. Because if we have the heavenly vision, then you'll be pursuing that vision to the end. Moses, Aaron, they had a heavenly vision about the land Canaan. But the rest of the people were only moving in the vision that they don't, they don't even know, they've not even seen, but they just heard it. So it is easy for them to be distracted on the way. And some were following, yet their heart is still in Egypt. Because they lack a heavenly vision. Today, if I can have a vision from God. I know that this vision is of the law. Nothing can separate me from the vision. Because you can't, you, you can't tell me that this is not a vision of God. And even if situations come or on favorable situation comes, I know that I have a vision to pursue. Hallelujah. So let's take it for instance, I am God. And then people who pick those papers or those pieces of papers. Are the people praying to know the will of God for their life? Hallelujah. Amen. And then God has come. I, I came. In a vision. And then just as I brought the book to you. And then you pick something from it. And then you walk out from your vision. You know that this dream is a divine dream. Because you have been praying for something that you don't even know how it will come about. 
So quickly, you try to know what the Lord gave you in a vision. Hallelujah. Please, are you with me? Maybe you are praying for work. But you don't know what you don't want to involve to something that will not be of God. So you start praying to the Lord, fasting to the Lord. And imagine such a dream or a vision or case to you, you know that God is telling me something. Hallelujah. Then you now start to, to ask the Lord, what is the meaning of this thing? I believe this is a heavenly vision. But how can I go about the vision? Hallelujah. Then the Lord will now tell you that now open the vision you just took. So now let's all open to the piece of paper. Now you pray to the Lord, God has given you. Now the instruction is that do or just open the piece of paper that you have in the vision. And yeah. this is the will of my of, of this is my will for you. Hallelujah. Brother, what is the will of God? What did you see in the vision? I will say that. Uh, and uh, Hallelujah. Okay. Then quickly, you know that this is the will of God for your life. So you will start to pursue it. I can't come to Brasa and say, no, no, Brasa, you have to get up. You are so intelligent. Why do you want to get up this? You must have traveled over Brasa, you can't travel and get a doctor's house. You can't drop in to the end, you can't go to the end. Then Brasa, we will tell the person that. This is the heavenly vision I received from the Lord. And I need to pursue it to the end. So, Brother will be calm in his mind and do the will of God. Because he is clear about the heavenly vision. Hallelujah. Brother David, what is your heavenly vision? A prophet. Hallelujah. So if Brasami is evangelizing, our brother becomes a prophet. He knows that I need to step in the office of the prophet. So he will never come up or, or condemn Brasami of, of, of not seeing or prophesying. Because he will pursue his life of Because this is the vision for the life of Radini. Because he was praying when the Lord gave him that vision. And he knows this is the perfect answer. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Apostle, hallelujah. Yeah. We have an apostle over here. So he knows that now I have to go to the field work and establish the churches. Apostle, yeah. the Maybe I why are you moving all around? Let me show you too. Look at your way. Look at your children. You have to be at the ground place. But now you tell me, my brother, thank God for that advice. But I have a heavenly vision. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let's mention those who get the Every a missionary, hallelujah. Amen. And this is your line of focus. This is the healthy vision for your life. If you do something else, you are coming to one day. But you pray for it. The Lord gave you to you. have to step into your office. Yeah, missionary, any of us you know, touch them now. Maupanya Kakato, Ono Pedamuna Mo, Ono School, Pepper School, you don't see, I know, now I'm with all here now. Continue to put them when my own missionary is along with that. Yeah, so missionary, in, 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 okay, in both aspects. Okay. But that's a plan, evangelist. Yes. But there's a difference. Eh, you put up the other one. One, eh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody took a evangelist, a prophet, a apostle, you said, What is this? <laughs> you come with the person. In the mission, I saw the Lord. And in the mission, the Lord gave me a book. And as I took, Hallelujah. And who are? Uh, okay. A spiritual teacher. Hallelujah. And who are? Uh, a politician. Yes. The Lord will be going in the politician. Who will be a true politician? So, in, in, in just a brief moment, we need to pursue a heavenly vision. Because the differences we are having in the church, because we don't have, what you say, some of us don't have heavenly vision. Because if I have a heavenly vision, I'll perceive it. I'll not look left or right, but I'll just perceive what I've been called to do. And that will promote the growth of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, are we getting the concept? Yeah. Let's quickly go to the Bible. And read Acts chapter 26, verse 19. Acts 
Acts 26, 19. 19. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's all read it together. Amen. Amen. And when you read this scripture, King Agrippa is not just a king. He's a mighty king. God. He's not a king to play with. He's a king that can set you free or imprison you. Hallelujah. And then Paul the Apostle stood before this great king. With all boldness and all strength. And he said to the whole king, King Agrippa, I am not disobedient about the heaven mission. I am not disobedient. Okay. I am not disobedient. Not okay. I will not. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. This looks like he's insulting the king. But the actual fact is that Paul is not scared. Either he will free him or he will imprison him. But what he stands for is the vision of God. Unfortunately for some of us, anytime we have heavenly vision, Anytime somebody who is of a higher value steps in back, they will draw back with the heavenly vision. They will surrender the heavenly vision. Hallelujah. Paul knows the beginning and the end of his story. Because when he encountered Christ on the road of Damascus, he would never ever forget in his life the experiences he went through, the voice he heard, and the work that he will be doing. He knows from the beginning. So nothing will distract Paul from a heavenly vision. Not even great king. Agrippa. Hallelujah. Maybe you are called to be an evangelist. A person can stand here and say, Oh, my, my, my father, what are you doing? There are great things to do. I can be sponsor you with this work. Meaning a different work, not the evangelist. But if you consider the earthly prophet, you may deny your vision and follow the earthly vision. Hallelujah. If there is a heavenly vision, then there is also earthly vision. And it looks like most of us are pursuing earthly visions. But the earthly vision will only end you at a certain point. 
It will never take you to the other world. Hallelujah. But if you pursue the heavenly vision, you will gain on earth. And then the world to come. I want to stress on the heavenly vision. Because it is very vital to the Christian dawn. Somebody may ask me, how can I also see this heavenly vision? Or do we have some peculiar people that only that that, that are only uh, 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 used by God? Hello, I'm a from No. God can use every believer to fulfill what he wants to do on earth. Hallelujah. There's, we are all special before the Lord. Because we are a chosen generation. Hallelujah. And thank God that you and I are also part of that chosen generation. Meaning, you are a good person for the Lord to use. So the only thing one needs to do is to pray. Hallelujah. Because it takes a prayerful man to see a heavenly vision. God can never give something precious of His to somebody who can't even pray. God cannot give His heavenly vision to somebody who is always willing to do His own will. So such a person needs to go before God and pray. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 10, that's the story of Polinius and his family. The Bible, the Bible made mention of some good deeds of Polinius. The Bible says he is a devout Christian. He give arms to the knee and the poor. And, and he prayed to the Lord always. In one of his prayers, he saw a heavenly vision. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And he told him to send people, some, some of his servants, to Peter, who was also praying in the spirit by then. Hallelujah. So you will realize that, let's read it, Acts chapter 10, verse 30. That's what the Bible stated that he was praying. Please, let's be together. Yeah. 
Amen. All that I want us to see is that he was fasting and praying when the vision came. Meaning he was not all, he was not only doing it just a day. Meaning he was doing it for days. If I always say for the eighth day, meaning first day he was praying, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth, sixth, and the eighth day, the Lord gave him the heavenly mission. The fourth day, sorry, the fourth day. Hallelujah. And the same hour about um, the Bible will say uh, uh, about noon. Petro, Peter was also on top of a certain uh, a building praying in the Spirit of God. And then a vision also came to him. And then in that vision, Peter was not trying to obey the vision. <laughs> because the, the vision is not all that clear to him. But the Lord is saying that I have revealed unto you, so obey the heavenly vision. Some of us, when we have heavenly visions and that vision will not favor us, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. But sometimes the Lord may stress on you to obey that heavenly vision. Hallelujah. And when Peter went for to obey the, the, the vision, there was salvation. So sometimes, God may reveal a heavenly vision to you. Not for your profit per se. But sometimes for the salvation of souls somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Our brother took a doctor. God wants to save a life. Through your, 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 your knowledge in medicine. So if you are not there at that moment, such a soul can go to hell. Hallelujah. So sometimes you may think that the Lord is calling me to do something, but not knowing it is for the benefit of others. Hallelujah. It's sometimes difficult for the human body. It's sometimes difficult for our mentality. How can God say I should eat something which is not true? Hallelujah. But God in his own wisdom knows what he is doing. God in his own wisdom knows what he is doing. Peter thought, this is, this is not fair for a Christian to do. And the Lord revealed unto him three times. But Peter was saying, no, 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 Lord, this is, I will never ever eat it. But at the end thereof, he praised Lord that all oh, the gospel even came to the Gentiles. Because he obeyed the heavenly vision. 
There are a lot of stories we can compare with the heavenly vision in the Bible. But today I just want us to base on that of calling you. Hallelujah. Somebody may be praying somewhere for salvation. But the right answer to that person's prayer is you. And it will take a heavenly vision for you to obey another person's heavenly vision. Hallelujah. I want to make a, a quick, this is a real example about me. Okay. One day I was in my room and I heard a voice. But as I made for me, he said, Father. Actually, I was in prayers. To go to a certain village to look for somebody and to pray for the person. I don't even know the village. And the direction, I don't know either the person is a male, female, young, old. I don't even know. Now, at least the Lord should tell me the house number or something. No name. At least a name will be okay, but absolutely nothing. So I was thinking about this vision. So I was asking, why is that child? I asked my mom. My mom just looked at me and laughed. Because by then, even the ever I cannot even speak this much. And I've, it's like such a town will not even come to my mind in the first place. <laughs> So he said, okay, but uh, I'll just ask somebody, that person will take you to the place and whatever that you want to do, go and do it. But what is the name of the person? And I said, I don't know the name of the person. And he said, how can you go to a place without knowing the name of the person? This is, it looks insane. Is he a male or a female? I said, I don't know. Is he old or young? I said, I don't know. Now he said, okay, if that's what the Lord revealed to you in the vision, then go. Hallelujah. So I am back on a journey that I don't even know. So I went to I went to one sister that knows the place quite well, but not all that well. And he said he can help me. I said, okay, that's good. Let's go. And he also asked the same questions that my mom asked, and I said, I thought I don't know anything. So the person was also actually discouraged. <laughs> but I said, you, you be with me, I'll pay your transport and everything. Just show me to the town. I just know that I just did the town. The rest of it is from God, will come from God. So when we go to the town, the person that accompanied me. It's even worse than I am. 
So, so it was the driver that said that, hey, hey, we did go before she said, hey, hey, hey. So it's like already both of us are lost. <laughs> so I realized that in fact. Uh, this one, it is only God that can do something here. <laughs> and I was asking myself, did I actually speak to myself or it was a vision? But I, I, I believe strongly that this is a vision of God. So we start. I, I told the, 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 the sister that I don't know where we are going, but we just have to evangelize in the town. They say evangelize. Yes, if you are evangelizing the town, even every home we, we get to, you will be preaching to the person, and 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 I'll be asking a lot. Mau amal The person say, ah, ah, you didn't tell me the answer. This is the new strategy now. <laughs> So we went to a lot of houses. The sister will be preaching and I will pray. After I say, ah, uh, 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 so we were all tired of, of going out to have house to have without seeing the person. And I told the sister that this thing we are doing, we are not going to eat until we find the person. I said, hey, you didn't tell me this one also. We do not even eat, we don't eat like fasting. Yes. 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 So we are tired, actually tired. But yet pursuing. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Tired yet pursuing. So I told the sister that it's like we've moved in now. So let's go to the far end of the town and start the evangelism there and then go to the end of the town. Maybe we will find a person. I realized that the sister was not actually happy with me. <laughs> So to cut everything short, when we were going, I decided to miss somebody. So I entered a house without knowing that it's a house. You know, village, there's no wall, so we can enter house, come from house. Yes. So I entered and I was even walking to somebody's door to realize that I, I, I'm, I'm in a house. The person said, What do you want? And I, I decided to go back and run away. <laughs> Because it is unlawful. It's like you and your but take a gagger mother without permission or something like that. Ta ever get in the mamma for the woman volo. So I give a mau do 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 do
Sister Brother, And I heard a voice, this is the person. Hallelujah. <laughs> you they were crying. They spoke against the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And up to now, that brother is with me now. Hallelujah. So imagine somebody from a village, I don't even know. The name I don't know. But the Lord is saying, pursue that heavenly thing so it is done. Later, people ask you, are you sick? You say, no, I've been fasting and praying for all this. I say, hey, that's why you are so silly like this. They say, yes, I capture him. One day I'll show him the picture. You realize this person, either is HIV patient or he's a sickler. A God need to answer his prayers. And he sent you to a faraway village to look for something which human cannot understand. Hallelujah. So sometimes heavenly visions is for other people's salvation. And it takes fasting and prayers. So if you pray diligently, the Lord will answer our prayers. The Lord will increase our strength. The Lord will show forth His signs and wonders. There will be amazing uh, flow of the Spirit that human will never understand. So this calls for prayer. Because if you don't pray, how will you know the vision of God for your life? God may not call all of us to, 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 to be on a pulpit to preach. But the work is at various places that the Lord can send the people if only the vision is clear. The Lord told Isaac not to go to Egypt when it was drought and famine. Everything was bad. Everybody was running to Egypt. He said, Do not go to Egypt. Stay in this land. And when he obeyed the heavenly vision, he prospered and the people even jealous him. Hallelujah. Amen. People are running to Egypt. In order to get some sort of 
a relief, but the Lord is saying, stay at where you are. And press on. And press on. And pursue. And at the end, the Lord will show forth his glory. May the Lord bless us all. And give us every vision. Individually. That at the end, glory be to his holy name. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.